thank you for joining us. Um, hope uh, everybody is doing well, staying safe. And uh, just a way of introduction, my name is Wase Nouri. Uh, I'm the software developer, development manager um, here at Hawker Systems. Joining me is uh, Jesse Seeger, our lead developer, pretty much the brains behind most of our products, all of our products, and Chris Cook, uh, our hardware product manager. Today, we the aim is um, to give you a really brief introductory um, walkthrough in uh, SolidWorks macros and automation. Um, and can establish the spectrum from something very basic and also hopefully show the something on the advanced side. Um, SolidWorks automation comes up very often. A lot of people um, want to utilize it, but there's a bit of a mystery around it. So hopefully we can demystify that today. The agenda is, as I said, uh, an introduction um, to what SolidWorks automation is, uh, what the API is, and we're going to do a walk through a macro, a very basic macro. And uh, if you don't have any programming experience, worry not. This is meant to be for, hopefully, for everybody. Um, and then I'm going to in introduce something a little bit more advanced, um, kind of a way of show and tell. Um, some of the um, advanced tools we have, we're working on. Uh, and uh, we'll extend it a little bit more, come back to um, hardware tools, how we can utilize that to get more out of your automation, to make uh, your macros more functional, if you will. And towards the end, I'm gonna, we're going to have a Q&A. So feel free to questions and quizzes for anything um, you know general related for uh, to APIs and development and I'll be happy to answer you first of all what is hawkware hawkware is um, our brand of uh, automation tools um, basically we customize SolarWorks SolarWorks products SolarWorks PDM um, and, and simulation occasionally um, to extend the capabilities of the products most of our projects come from custom development, customers asking um, for automation, uh, customization to either either um, fit uh, SolidWorks products into their processes, connect SolidWorks product to other processes, and and or, or just save time. Um, so and, and we brand all of those tools Hawkware. You can find more about us in um, our YouTube channel. And you will get the PowerPoint at the end of this session, actually. Um, and we've got a, a range of tools from um, very basic day-to-day -day activity, uh, productivity tools, to some of the really advanced uh, one-of-a-kind tools. What is API? So, if you don't know, it's application programming interface, right? The application is your SolarWorks, PDM, simulation, ERP, programming, obvious, usually it's VBA, VB.NET, C Sharp, and some C++. C++. Um, and then the interface, how you actually connect your programming to the, the underlying the host application. Um, so. API serves as the gateway between user-generated uh, code and the application. Uh, the vendors obviously don't want to make available their source codes, but they do want to give you the ability to automate and extend the capabilities of their software, and API is the way to do it. Um, all of our SolarWorks products um, have open APIs, and they have uh, quite extensive APIs uh, with, with really well-documented uh, features, which means you can you can really you can really do a lot with SolarWorks products um, with automation. So why would you do that? Well, customize applications, as I said, to fit your needs. 
um, enhance existing features. You can actually uh, arrange features in such a way that actually the, the end result is better than the original feature, believe it or not. Um, communicate with external systems. This comes up quite a bit for us. So people have MRPs, ERPs, PLMs, other systems, databases they want to connect to. Uh, or they want to get data from or push data to from SOLIDWORKS or SOLIDWORKS PDM or other applications. And API is the way to do that. And, and also productivity. Um, things you want to do all the time, things you want to, uh, that takes time, uh, repetitive processes, you can macro and automate that. Um, and one of the most important ones is eliminating user errors. If you want consistency, um that's you know you, you can you can use apis to kind of build in those business logic uh, behind the macros types of solarworks automation uh the most common one is uh the swp um macros or vba VSTA, which is a Visual Studio tools for applications, add-ins, um, those are actually um, actual add-ins. Uh, all add-ins in SolarWorks that you see, your PDM or your simulation, they've all been written by on top of SolarWorks APIs. So you can write your own um, add-ins. And SolarWorks does have the, uh, the development kit available on their website and also on your installation media. And that's all documented in their API help. And you can also write standalone desktop web applications. And uh, we'll show you a little bit of that um, later on. This is for something that maybe you want to combine SolarWorks with some other applications. And you want to have a, a dashboard um, that connects to multiple applications, in which case it will be a standalone application. Help. Um, the online help is quite extensive and it's updated um, constantly. So I would always rely on all online help. Uh, essentially just Google type SOLIDWORKS API and the, the first and second and third and all have the API documentation. Inside SOLIDWORKS, you can go tools or actually help and API help. That again, it takes it as the same document, but there's an offline version as well. PDM, um, if you're into PDM automation, as I said, our group does a lot of PDM automation. Same thing, online help and offline help as well. So with that, I'm just gonna go to SolarWorks. And can I introduce you to, to our Visual Basic Editor. Now, VBA tools, uh, VBA macros um, are the most common, the most native to SOLIDWORKS. VSTA, which is a DLL macros, came a little bit later. Um, I personally either do VBA or I do the add-ins using Visual Studio Community Editions or you know, C-sharp.net, um, VB.net or C-sharp. Um, VSTAs or tend to be a little bit less stable. So if you're using that to distribute, to give to everybody in the company, um, then I would probably steer away from them. Um, they are a lot more powerful from VBA, but uh, unfortunately they tend to be less stable, as I said, and a little bit unpredictable. It's just my experience. So with that, let's start with the new macro. So. That's, by the way, toolbars, macro, and if you're wondering, got a play button, a record button, edit existing macros, and new macro. So I've got some built-in macro that I'm going to share um, with you, but um, it's great. One from scratch. And you can see that the uh, type is SWP. Uh, 
And here's my editor. Now, one thing that you may want to remember is that you usually want to record uh, a macro, edit it, and, and then edit, make changes to that. Um, the reason being that recorded macros will actually give you some code, it'll help you, um, you know, point you to the right direction, uh, gives you some hints and what calls to use. And I, I do that all the time, actually. I'm not a VBA programmer. My programs tend to be C sharp. Uh, and if I forget something, I just do a record macro and I get the code that way. Um, for the purposes of today, I'm just going to go from scratch. Um, so you see you no know, wall in the calls and the structure of this macro. So with VBA, um, most of you probably know some, and, and if you don't know, the declaration uh, of variables is dim. It's a dim for dimension, and you've got some objects, whatever they want to call it, and this is variables. Now, when you record the macro, when you go new um, or you start a new macro, um, things are declared as objects. And objects, they're valid, they'll work, but they won't give you intelligence. They won't give you um, available methods and properties for those objects. So this is repetitive, so should remember this. If I go as space and I get the intelligence, all the stuff that are available for me, SLD works dot SLD works. What that tells um, the editor is that it's explicitly, this is, my SOLIDWORKS. That's a SOLIDWORKS session going on. I can put that inside because I don't really, I'm not planning on going outside this method. And this is subroutine if I used to if we use the VBA terminology. So now you can see the second line is setting this object and it tells the editor that this is now my application. And I can do things with the application, open documents, close it, get the window, things like that. Um, the second most common one is my model. So if I do SW model as model doc2, this is some, something to remember as well. Uh, model doc2 is your model doc that um, open SOLIDWORKS document, whether it's a drawing, an assembly, part. Access it through that. Now I am going to set that. As the active document. So whatever document that's open, it's going to be set to that. Next, I'm going to make sure that something is open. And here's a bit of VBA. If the subly model is nothing, then message box, the user, and Tell, it some, tell them something. Um, you must open a model first. Exit sub, end f. End f basically closes my if loop. So we're telling it that if there's no model open, just exit. Right now, there's no model open. How do I test my code? This is a good good practice to keep testing your code as you write it, especially at the beginning. The, a, the key F8 is the step uh, debugger. So it goes line by line. Keep pressing F8. Now here's uh, my model. It should be nothing. And sure enough, I get the message. Got the first piece working. It's going to go a little bit faster now. Now, next, I'm going to test what type of the model is open. The draw, the macro we're going to do, sorry, I should have introduced it first. 
um, is something that comes off and is we're gonna switch the template of a drawing. So from one sheet to another sheet. If it's not a drawing, if the, my model is part an assembly, then um, I will tell the user that this is the wrong type of the document for um, the macro. Get type. And I know based on experience that one is part, two is assembly, as um, three is drawing. Um, if this is drawing, then actually, not message box same deal with exiting sub and closing my if loop so let's just that It's going to open um, a part, obviously not a drawing, and see if this works. Oops. As I said, first one is part, two is assembly, and three is drawing. So obviously this was a part, so it worked. If I run this, this ma runs the macro um, all together, and F8, as I say, it steps through it. Again, this works. All right, we're in business. So now we know that the macro will never run on a part or assembly, um, which can lead to uh, errors. And we also know that the macro is not going to um, run on empty. SOLIDWORKS session with no document, no active document, which is also a problem. So now I am going to do a little bit more um, generic programming in terms of how do I go to each sheet and kind of think logically. I'm going to open a drawing. The drawing is going to have multiple sheets. I'll go through each sheet. I'll edit that sheet format. I'll swap the, the, the sheet format, close the edit, or go back to edit sheet, rather close the edit sheet format, and that's it. For a given size, uh, for a given template size, I'll have an equivalent drawing uh, format. So the user opens it, and the software should check what format it is. Go grab my standard format and replace the current format with, with that. So with that, I'm going to declare some constants. Constants are essentially um, not variables, but things that don't change. Um, a path to a network folder, in this case, a sheet format. So constant. sheet format path for A sizes. And I already have that path saved, so I won't type it, just copy and paste that. Path B. and copy and paste that. So I've got my two formats that I'm going to use. Now, as I move along here, I will need more and more dimensions, more and more variables, uh, objects that I need to access. One of the objects, the next objects I'm going to access is the drawing document. Now remember, SOLIDWORKS model is any model. Now, if I wanna go more specific, I wanna go to drawing document. draw as drawing doc. 
I can, for for better practice, I can collect all my variables there. I'm going to set that to be my model. Now, because my model is drawing, I've actually made sure of that here. It's going to be compatible. All right. Uh, then in that drawing, it's going to have sheets. Uh, and I want to make sure I go through each one of those sheets. So I know that SW draw, and if I enter period, that's going to give me an um, IntelliSense. I can investigate this, look at my help file. Um, and this is actually a really cool uh, tool to, to uh, utilize in learning VBA. You find something that looks like it, it's what you're looking for. The names are, are typically tend to be pretty good. Uh, and then you can investigate um, that in the help file or, or here kind of play around with it, see what it needs. So if I get it sheet count, how many sheets are there? And the next one is sheet names, which is what I'm looking for. Now this is a variable. And whenever in VBA you've got names, tend to be a variant, um, something else to remember. So I'm going to sheet names as variant. All right, now, once I have that, so I've got an array of sheet names, I'm going to go for each one of them, step through and iterate through each sheet. I'm gonna go for each um, sheet name, V name, variable name, and sheet names. And I'll put next, just so that I can close the loop. I go inside that and write my code. So in order for me to, to go this through this, see there's a variable missing. Declarations, I'm gonna go V name as string. String is a text for lack of better words. And then I will go and get the properties of that sheet. So once I go to the sheet, I go down one level lower and get the properties. And from the sheet properties, it'll tell me what the template size is, what drawing size is, and so on. There's another variable, sheet. Sheet itself is an object. So for each one of them, I set the active sheet to be my drawing, get sheet. Or sheet. You can see in the bracket, it tells me what the argument it needs, and that needs my name of the sheet. Now that's my active sheet. Sheet properties is another variable that I need. And sheet properties is also a variable, uh, uh, a variant. And see, so there's get properties and get properties too. In SolarWorks, um, as they add more calls to the API, they don't obsolete the previous ones, but they add a numerical value at the, at the end. So you've got properties two, property three, maybe another call. So typically, you want to use the latest one.
And the properties too, if I look at uh, my health file, it would tell me that this has, um, it returns an array and the first one is my size. The first element of that array is my size. So I'm going to use, if you're familiar with select case, zero, right? I'm gonna test what the sizes are. And I'm only interested in two of the sizes. So maybe my company just has A and B sizes and everything else has one format. It's W, DWG, paper, sizes. This is my enumerator. So I've got an enumeration and I want to see if there's an A0 size or a B size. If it is A size, then I want my sheet format to be my constant And again, I've got a missing declaration and good practice to always declare your variables. Oops. I've got a B size condition. B and and I'm going to and select that. So now let's open a drawing. Got two sheets here. I wanna make sure that my macro can actually step through my sheets and get the sizes at the very least. Again, my and the F8. Hmm. Right there. This is being named a string and it says this is the wrong variable type. It's variant because at this point we don't know if it's a string or not, but it is a string. It just VB doesn't know. So I've got my first sheet. If I hover over, you can see that it tells me what variable it is. We name it sheet one. So it's successful in getting that. I've got an active sheet. It got the properties, not complaining. And now it's stepping to the sizes. The first sheet size is B size. So it actually did come here. And again, there's nothing because this is empty. I probably didn't format it properly or spell it. So here's what's called a breakpoint. And breakpoint is a fast way to um, debug specific areas of the code. If I click on play, it will just go right there for me. And now I've got it. All right. So, so far we're successful in discerning the 
sizes of our sheets and getting the sheet names, activating each one of those sheets. All right, so that's that's pretty good to to begin with. Um, now a little bit more. Once I once I have on each sheet, once I know what size it is, I'm going to go ahead and um, change that. So if not my active sheet, you can see that this, I've got an active sheet here. Template name. If it's not already pointing to that template that I wanted to update it. And you can see that there's a sheet format is my variable that it takes one value here and another value based on the condition over here if it's not already pointing to that then i want my active sheet set template name and sheet format and reload template. Keep no changes. No, that's a that's an option um, for your sheet inside sheet notes. I'm going to end F. And then in my drawing document, I'm going to activate that sheet. So sheet, sheet one is activated already, but sheet two, I'm gonna activate it because when you set template or change template, the zoom actually gets a little bit messed up. So once I, once I uh, activate that sheet, I'm going to um, use the model document and view, Zoom. Zoom to fit. All right. Let's see if this works. So I hope you can see both screens here. I'm gonna. All of my conditions are met. It's a drawing. It goes to the first. One, set the sheet format. There, my sheet changed. So the, the new one is pretty much the same. I have a extra logo and some extra notes. Zoom to fit. Second one. See the zoom is a little bit off and it brings it back and we're done. So this is, um, I would say successful macro. Now, feel free to ask any questions um, on the right-hand side. I uh, apologize if we're going a little bit faster. Um, about this macro. Um, I'll come back to, to uh, Q&A uh, a little bit later, but uh, if you have any questions right now, let me know. Okay, um, as I said, we have, this is a very basic um, SOLIDWORKS macro. Uh, we have done something, we have done things that are quite a bit more involved. Um, uh, PDM is, is where we actually do most of our development because that tends to be um, the tool that requires the most customization. Um, there are different processes, different external systems and different um, workflows that people wanna customize and, and, and really stretch and extend the, the software to fit their criteria. Um, 
I'm we're gonna we're not gonna go through this in any detail, but I'm, I am going to um, let Jesse introduce um, a really cool platform tool that we have done um, for um, connecting your PDM data to the web um, or web-based solutions, um, and then we will come back to um, the hardware tools at the very at the very end, and hopefully have some little bit more questions and answer period. So with that, I'm going to switch it to Jesse. Gotcha. OK. All right. OK, so um, we had a mix of uh, people in here from ad advanced developers to just getting started. Um, the PDM API uh, can be um, quite a bear to get started with. Um, and if you've never used um, a web API before, uh, it's actually much, much easier to get started with this than, the, than using the actual um, API. So a web API is basically, we're just making HTTP requests to um, a website and we're getting data back. So let me just show you how to get started really quick. So when we when you get the API, you're gonna get application, you're gonna add a service and you're just gonna give it any name you want. You're gonna enter your um, vault name, enter, give it a port number, click okay. And you now have a new website um, up and running. Um, you're going to get a user interface that looks just like this. Um, you're going to authenticate um, with using your PDM user name and password. Um, and then you're going to get all these methods so you can get stuff regarding bill of materials, computed bomb, drive bombs, um, file details, uh, file previews. Um, you're going to get an interface like this so you can say well um, every file in pdm has an id so we access them through the id um, let's make a request back um, we get a preview um, if we don't know the file id we can enter the file name uh, on a lot of these requests um, we can do file searching um, we can interrogate the folder structure in PDM. Uh, we can even access the groups and users. Um, so we can send a user a message. Uh, and then we can look at the uh, workflows and the files that are in certain states. Um, so we could have, uh, this will give you the workflow. Um, it'll actually, you can see these you know, top left height. This is actually painting the workflow that's in your PDM administrator. Um, so you could actually recreate that in a user interface if you wanted. Um, so let's take a quick look at, uh, so this is a website we just whipped together real quick. Um, the, but also this web API allows you to do is use any language. So we talked about VBA, C Sharp. Um, with web API, you can use anything that has a, uh, a way to access HTTP requests. So it could be Python or JavaScript or any PHP. Um, you could integrate it with an existing website if you have. Um, so let's take a look at this. So we're going to log in with our username and password. Um, so this is a, just a dashboard that really simple to show the use. Just to, I wanted to create for my users. Uh, when they log in, I wanted to sort all the files that are in these are workflow states um, in PDM. And these are the two that I'm really concerned about. I wanna know what's in work in progress and what's in pending approval. And release is a, is a much, much bigger list. So we're not gonna show that here, um, but you can see it's showing me what's in here. So I could say, okay, what's work in progress? You could take a look. Um, I could show some details here. I'm gonna grab that preview from the web API. I'm gonna show all the details. Uh, in the bill of materials. Um, so this, uh, and then I could perform actions on this, like, yeah, go ahead and submit for approval, uh, and I'll transition it. 
Another thing that I want to do is, okay, maybe I want it a little more interactive. So I've created my own to-do list. Um, and these are not workflow states. These are these live in the application. Um, so I can, I just created these lists and I can, uh, you know, drag and drop between these lists um, as I'm working on them. And this is just stuff for me to keep track of my work. I can go ahead and add stuff to this list. Um, I can search the vault and say, yeah, I'm going to add these two. Okay, I can go ahead and create list. Um, on create a new list. I can go ahead and drag some files over. Um, and there you go. This is all stored inside um, a PDM database through what PDM calls uh dictionaries or key value stores so i can store this data um based on uh, a name and a key value uh, so that how that data is stored in there i can give you a little peek into how we access uh the api so i'm just if you're familiar with javascript at all since we're looking at a little code today i'll show you my code um i'm just doing get requests so this is the list of files that are in a certain state. So I'm going workflow, workflows, states, and then I'm giving it the state ID, and then the list of files that are in that state. And then I'm setting it to an object, and then I'm painting it in a column for people to see. Um, to get the uh, preview, um, uh, I'm also making a request back to the API. Um, files, the file ID, the preview method, I'm getting it, um, getting it as a byte array and I'm painting it on the screen. So one of the things that you can do with this is if you're building out a website or have an existing website, um, you can integrate um, with existing systems really easy. So whether you have a ERP, System. Many ERP systems have uh, a web API or web services API um, that you can integrate and merge that data and show it in a single user interface and let your users interact that way. I'll be happy to answer any questions on that after as well. But I'll bounce this back to Wafe. All right. Um, thanks, Jesse. Um, I have, um, I can see there are some questions here. Um, and I, I will, if you're trying to answer it, uh, Chris, I think, is trying to answer it. And I've tried to answer it a few. But one of the questions that comes up, and I actually anticipated that, was can this be done on a bulk um, number of files, changing sheet format? Um, the answer is yes. So there are two ways you can do that. One is that you can um, create a, an add-in, uh, Visual Studio uh, applications, um, and, and then and just open a whole bunch of files and run this macro on it. And that's what I actually recommend if you are trying to build your first um, major applications um, or application for Visual uh, for, for SolidWorks. That would be a really good good uh, first application. Um, I want to point you to the PowerPoint. Um, and that's on the left hand, on the right hand side, there's a little icon that says handouts and the go to webinar. And in that handout, I've included the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint includes um, what we showed you, a link um, to the Dropbox, um, to the macro. Actually, there's a couple of macros. I wanted to go through two, but if we don't have time, uh, to this macro, another one, as well as um, our website address, um, our YouTube channel, some resources for getting started with Visual Studio or VBA, um, and and and, and um, the basic slides that you went through. So feel free to download that that uh, PowerPoint. Uh, it won't be available after that. You can email me directly, and I will I will share it with you. But you can download it right now. Um, it didn't. It doesn't allow 
SWP files to be attached directly. So I had to put it in, in Dropbox and uh, put the link on the PowerPoint. Okay, now, as I said, there are two ways to do a bulk. The other one um, is what I wanted to come back to is Hawkware Tools. Hawkware Tools is a suite of applications. Um, it's free, it's for SolarWorks, and it's dynamic, which means we constantly add more applications and plugins to it. So it's a combination of plugins for all our customers and non-customers um, to use the productivity tools. And all of them have come um, from direct requests uh, from customers or enhancement requests to SolarWorks. And just a bit of history, we have got, uh, we have had this tool for a, a number of years, or certainly over 10 years. And many of um, original plugins of hardware tools um, ended up being SolarWorks functionalities. So it's not that SolarWorks copied from us, it's just that we were responding to customers, I think, faster than SolarWorks was. Um, we still have quite a bit of tools, uh, so feel free to download it. Because I say the download link is in the PowerPoint that you can download itself uh, or from our website, um, hawkerdsys.com. And you can go to Hawkware and then browse to our free, free tools as well as um, get brochures from the products as well. Okay, so here's Hawkware tools. Um, you can see that it's, it's pretty um, non-disruptive of your SolarWorks, it sits in the, in the task. It has some good links, SolarWorks support, uh, our events, things like webinar, like what, what you're watching today, um, more tools, um, 3D printer links, and also applications. Uh, so one of the cool, tool, uh, cool things about hardware tools is that if I click on download more tools, it actually, can take me to um, a portal where we constantly put more um, add-ins there. And you can you can take a look, browse to it, see if you like it, and then download. And you can uninstall uh, the ones that you don't need the same way. Okay, so the one that's relevant is the user macros here. The user macros, um, here's the tools, by the way, to get the delayed reaction here. You can see some of our tools and you can download. Click and install. Um, user macros allows you, I already had it set up, um, to browse to a macro and then run it on SolarWorks events. So run it on new document uh, or rebuild on save, close. And, and that's kind of how you would go about the bulk change. So here's a trick. You'd put it on new document or rebuilt actually, it's probably better. You use the SolarWorks task scheduler. If you haven't used it, um, look it up. It's, it's a, an underappreciated tool of SolarWorks. SolarWorks task scheduler allows you to update properties, uh, save SolarWorks files in different formats, things like that from a directory. Um, and in that maybe you can do anything that, that will constitute a save or a rebuild. Uh, it would be changing custom properties. Uh, for example, add a custom property. And if you had this on, and if you had hardware tools on, then whenever the drawings are opened, this macro would run. Uh, and then you get, you get your, uh, your bulk update from that. So let's test this. Right now it's uh, set to run on rebuild. I'm gonna close this and not save changes. Open the same drawing. And let's save that, hit rebuild. And there you go. Like magic. If you're um, standardizing some things, reminders to users um, to making to make sure they're using the correct format, correct custom properties, um, uh, correct templates, correct uh, file paths, um, 
the user macros of Awkward Tools is, is an excellent tool to, you, to have. Um, all right. So we're going to go with um, some uh, questions. Let me open it up. Chris, do you have any uh, outstanding questions that uh, I might have missed? Because the list is quite a bit. Yeah, it looks like we've been uh, catching them as they come through. Okay. Um, somebody asked if they could use a Visual Studio uh, editor to do the macros. Um, SWP is uh, the tool of choice for VBA macros. And as I said, that's the only native SOLIDWORKS macros. If you were to use a Visual Studio that I recommend uh, downloading the standard development kit from SOLIDWORKS. Um, and you can just go to your customer portal, SOLIDWORKS customer portal and type SDK and you'll have a, a download, a, an updated um, download link. Um, and download Visual Studio um, Community Edition, which is free and the link is in the PowerPoint. Um, so that's that's when that's where you can do your C Sharp or VB.net, whichever um, language you're more comfortable with. Uh, to actually build tools with it. Um, SWPs, the way VBA works, is only with this um, editor that, that you saw. Uh, in addition to that, I'm going to go to, um, just, just to show you, um, so if I go uh, a new macro, or actually I can go here. I've got VSTA, uh, VB, and VSTA C Sharp. Um, as I said, these macros, um, you know, they're legitimate SOLIDWORKS macros. Um, the two drawbacks, it. one is that they used uh, .NET 2.0, which is quite a bit old. So when you're looking for examples on, on the web or even, even actually examples in, in the SOLIDWORKS help file, um, you may bump into limitations and, you know, this was not available in, in .NET 2.0 and it's available now. Um, so it's limiting in that. Regards and also, as I said, in my experience, they've they're not stable. So if you look at the knowledge base in SolarWorks, you will see a lot, um, a lot of articles on on VSTA just not working. Um, if you're if you're spending a lot of times, a lot of time to develop a macro and distribute it throughout the company, if you're an admin, then it's probably uh, going to be a hassle dealing with it, because some users are going to report it's not working. Some users are not going to even find it, things like that. Um, but here it is. It's .NET. Um, it's the old Visual Studio. Actually, this is Visual Studio 2005, um, I believe. That's the editor they're using. And, and you can develop um, .NET ma macros here. For practice, if you're just getting started with uh, Visual Studio, then then this this would be a good it's good, good place. But I tend to either stay with SWP um, macros or create uh, add-ins or, or, or actually even external applications. Mm -hmm.